Hi guys, welcome back to BCC Nita YouTube channel. Hope you guys are doing well in life. So today we will be discussing the solutions, the logics for question that came up in bi-weekly lead code contest 116. So let's start. So this is the first question. The question reads as you are given a zero indexed integer array. Uh, you have to calculate distinct count. There is a distinct count of subarrays which is defined as let nums i be subarray of nums containing all the indices i to j such that z i is less than j okay and uh, both are greater than zero okay and uh, the numbers are distinct in them so this is called the distinct count i would explain you what the question means so we have written the sum of the squares of distinct count of subarrays uh, subarray is a contiguous non empty sequence of element within an array so what question says is let's take an example like it's uh second suppose it's one two one suppose this is an array the question says that we have to take distinct elements like we have to form a distinct array distinct number of subarrays what form we have to form subarrays like 1 is a subarray, 2 is a subarray, take it to full screen, yeah. like another 1 is a subarray and 1 comma 2 is a subarray, 2 comma 1 is a subarray and 1 comma 2 comma 1 is a subarray, okay. So you can see that these all are subarrays. And we have to count the distinct number of elements. Like in 1, the distinct number is 1. So 1. In 2, it's 1. So 1. Let me take another pen. In 1, it's again 1. So 1. In 1, 2, both are distinct. So 2. In 2, 1, both are distinct. So 2. In 1, 2, 1, 2 are distinct. So 2. Now you have to square up all these uh, the distinct count like 1 square 1 square 1 square 3 plus 2 square 4 it's uh, 2 square that's 4 plus 2 square plus 2 square that is 4 4 1 3, 4 4 that is 15 yeah, that's 15 so you can see that the distinct count the distinct count is 15 in this case so similarly if we are given bigger array we have to do like this so now let's see what logic we can implement to do this uh, to do this code i would explain you from this example only one two one suppose uh what what is my task my task is to find out the distinct elements. My task is to find out the subarrays. What I would do is, them index then. I would traverse to each and every like one, two, one. Okay. So I will make an array that traverse uh, and loop that traverse to each of these elements. Like I. Then next, what I would do is. Uh, I would have to make like uh, I would take the uh, distinct element okay so I would take an unordered map why a map because the map will be storing the distinct elements I would take a map so that it will store distinct elements then what I would do is I would take another for another loop and I would start it with I and end it till the size okay uh, i is equal to 0 initially because that's the first thing and i will just keep on increasing the frequency like i what i will do is whatever the map is i will create like a frequency uh, i will increase the frequency like when one initially what i will do is when i visit this thing i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 i am here uh, let me take another pen okay so uh, initially when i is equal to 0, j is equal to 0, I am here. So 1, in the map, I have stored that 1 is mapped to 
one. Like one is present once. Then what I would do is I would take a distinct count. Like I don't. I know that there is one element, and I will take the distinct count. And then in a counter variable where I would count, I would just do square of distinct count. Distinct count square. And that's it. And I will keep on adding it. So I would uh, show you the code. And I would do a dry run there. So this is the code. So what I did is first the outer loop, then I set an outer that map. Why I set a map? Because I will be counting the frequency and I will storing the frequency and the unique elements. Because here we want the distinct elements. Then I would find the distinct count, like how many distinct elements are there. Then I would just keep on adding them to the counter. So let me uh, dry run this for you. Dry run the code. One, two, one. Okay. So, huh. so what happened is, well, initially when we enter the code, for us, i equal to zero, i equal to zero, and uh, counts. Uh, map is like there is nothing in it and j is equal to i so j is all equal to 0 so now what we are doing is we are doing counts num j plus plus what's j that's 0 so what's num j num 0 that's 1 so we are increasing the frequency of 1 by 1 in the counts so 1 is mapped to 1 okay now we are saying int distinct count is equal to counts dot size so the size of count is now one okay now counter is equal to distinct count into distinct count that's the square so the element the first like example like one the array of one is shorted i give you that example now in which we have to take distinct arrays different distinct arrays okay one is shorted in the next loop what would happen i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 1 now so i would have two elements that's 1 comma 2 when it will come to the map like 1's index is 1 and 2's index is 1 in this they are appearing once once so distinct count now is 2 because there is one element there is one element there are two elements, two distinct elements. So counter is equal to 2 into 2 and they add it to the first case. In the next test case, what happens? That is 1, 2, 1 because i is equal to 0 but j is equal to n minus 1. So we are going to the full of this. So when we calculate the frequency here now, so frequency of 1 is 2. And frequency of 2 is 1 but but the distinct count is still 2 because it's a count size and on what parameter distinct count is calculated distinct count will see how many key variables are there in map 1 is the key variable 2 is a key variable means we have only two elements then we will add it like counted to 2 into 2 and it's very true also now in case of 1, 2, 1, there are two distinct elements, okay, not three. Similarly, we will keep on doing for the next test case. So, what would happen is, what would happen for this thing, 1, 2, 1, okay, it's not available, it's not visible, okay. For this thing, 1, 2, 1, first we checked for 1, then we checked for 1, 2, then we checked for 1, 2, 1. Then we checked for 2, 1. Then we checked for 1. In short, we checked all the subarrays, all the possible subarrays. We took the count 1, we took the count like 2, took the count 2, took the count 2, took the count 1. And we have, and I missed one case, that's 2. We also take 2. So you can see we have taken all all the distinct counts 
and if we just add them simply we will just get our output here i was able to use two for loops because you can see the constraints they run to be less than equal to 100 so i can have a time complexity of o of n square that would not give me a, a time error like right? run time error that's why i can have make a solution of o of n square in the fourth question you can see uh, it's the same question just uh, the time constraints like have to be managed you can't have a solution of n square so we will be coming up with the solution so stay tuned hope you have understood the solution so if you understood the solution please do like the video and subscribe to our channel for most amazing stuff bye bye